my interview with Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. It turned out to be a feisty one. The president seemed to relish the give and take, which produced some startling and surreal moments. He even suggested at one point that Osama bin Laden is living quietly in Washington, D.C., home to the powerful woman he called Iran's enemy. You called Secretary of State Clinton an enemy of Iran. Do you consider President Obama an enemy of Iran as well? I consider that there is a difference between Mr. Obama and Mrs. Clinton. But I'd like to ask, is Mrs. Clinton a friend of Iran in your opinion, as an American? In your mind, do you think she's a friend of ours? I believe that Secretary of State Clinton is a friend of the Iranian people. I believe she is um, opposed to some actions of the Iranian government, specifically the development of uh, nuclear enrichment, which could lead to a weapons program in the future. Very well. We are friends of the American people. But if the United States stores several thousand nuclear bombs, threatens others, interferes in other countries' affairs, I would say these are actions that we are opposed to. Does that turn us into an enemy of the American people or the enemy of the wrong policies adopted by some authorities? Is Mrs. Clinton a friend of the Iran Iranian people, I represent the Iranian people. How are President Obama and Secretary of State Clinton different? Mrs. Clinton is interested in speedily moving relations with Iran to the point of a clash. Based on the information we possess, Mr. Obama does not have such an opinion. But there's a lot of pressure going around. I spoke with President Obama in Prague three weeks ago now. Uh, he said he would push very hard for another round of UN sanctions unless and until Iran comes into compliance with the International Atomic Energy Agency. No problem. Any measure he takes will be confronted by a position that we will announce. How so? We don't have a special friendship with Mr. Obama. We will act the same way as we have been doing so far against hostilities. Don't worry about us. We know how to defend ourselves. You're not concerned about sanctions even though it's not just the United States, it's France, it's Great Britain. I spoke with President Medvedev. Uh, in St. Petersburg, he said now it's time for sanctions against the Iranians a as well. Iran is becoming increasingly isolated. We will not accept something that's being forced upon us. The issue that three or four countries possess a nuclear bomb and want to prevent the others from its peaceful nuclear energy goals, it is in violation of laws and against justice, and we will not accept it. Therefore, let's put it aside. This is not something that by threatening Iran or putting pressure on Iran will force Iran to change its positions. This is not something that will work. Its time has passed. For them, it is better to cooperate with Iran according to the laws. But Mr. President, do you understand According to justice and on the basis of friendship. You talk about international law, you talk about principles of justice and friendship. Do you understand how so many in the world community cannot take your statements at face value about nuclear weapons. You say you don't want nuclear weapons when you refuse to comply with the guidelines set out by the International Atomic Energy Agency. 118 member states of the non-aligned movement have declared their support for Iran's position. Don't they count? 57 Islamic countries have supported the Iranian position. Look, Mr. Stephanopoulos, this outlook is wrong. This opinion that some American authorities have are the root cause of the world's problems. That someone who possesses nuclear bombs tells others not to use it for peaceful means. It's clear from, here, from listening to you that you're not concerned about another round of sanctions. Uh, but it's also been pretty clear to, to, to most observers that if Iran continues on this path, that the state of Israel will take matters into its own hands and uh, take out and Iran's nuclear program through military means. Iran will definitely continue its path. You should not even doubt that we will continue our path. But aren't you playing with fire? the potential of an Israeli military strike? Do they want to attack us? They're not a factor in our defense doctrine. We don't even count them. You don't plan for that at all? They're finished. The Zionist regime is finished. They can't even manage Gaza. They want to get into a conflict with Iran? Everybody knows about this, and I'm surprised that you as a professional journalist don't know. All world politicians know about it. So you're not... The Zionist regime can't manage Gaza. Do they want to get into a conflict with Iran? One final question. Uh, there's a new documentary uh, out that says that Osama bin Laden is living in Tehran. Is Osama bin Laden in Tehran? 
Your question is laughable. Why? The U.S. government has invaded Afghanistan in order to arrest bin Laden. They probably know where bin Laden is. If they don't know where bin Laden is, why did they invade? First, they invaded. Then they tried to find out where he is. Is that logical? Do you think this is logical? What I think is that you didn't answer my question. Is he in Tehran or not? Our position is quite clear. Some journalists have said bin Laden is in Iran. These words don't have legal value. Our position towards Afghanistan and against terrorism is quite clear. Is it true or not? Maybe you know, but I don't know. I'm asking you, you're the president of Iran. I don't know such a thing. You are giving news which is very strange. So let me ask it a different way. If you did know that Osama bin Laden was in Tehran, would you show him hospitality? Would you expel him? Would you arrest him? I heard that Osama bin Laden is in Washington, D.C. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. He's there because he was a previous partner of Mr. Bush. They were colleagues, in fact, in the old days. You know that. They worked together. Mr. bin Laden never cooperated with Iran, but he cooperated with Mr. Bush. I'll ask one more time and then I'll let you go. If you knew that Osama bin Laden was in Tehran, which you say you don't, if you knew, would you expel him? Would you arrest him? Would you show him hospitality? Our borders are closed to the illegal entry of anyone, anyone, whoever that may be, whether it's the three American mountaineers, Mr. Bin Laden, or anyone else. The borders are closed. Our position is clear. But you deny categorically that he's in Tehran today. He is not, Osama Bin Laden is not in Tehran today? Rest assured that he's in Washington. I think there's a high chance he's there. I don't agree, but thank you for your time, Mr. President.